back, everybody, to another episode of the Blazer Victory Podcast. John Duncan here. And, of course, I'm joined, as always, with my co-hosts, Darian Smith and Jimmy Marion. Guys, it's time to talk some basketball, some UAB basketball. But before we do, yesterday we dropped a new podcast episode just reacting to the UAB Football 2023 schedule that was just released on Tuesday. So, guys, if you have not checked out that podcast episode, go back and listen to it and as always go to www.blazervictory.com where you can find all this information articles podcasts merch about blazer victory what is blazer victory blazervictory.com answers all those questions gives you a lot of great content so again if you missed the episode yesterday go back and listen to it on blazervictory.com or wherever you listen to your podcast that being said Guys, how about UAB basketball winning two on the road? Like, it wasn't always easy, but UAB able to get it done beating UTSA and UTEP this past year. Yes. Week. Like, yeah, going on a road trip, going to, going to El Paso, then going to San Antonio, you know. And I think a lot of people can look at that UTSA game, you know, it's like, man, like, that team sucks, like, how how did this happen? You know, they do, yeah, they do suck, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did this happen? But you on a road trip, you tired. You know how in basketball this this happens a lot of times in the NBA. It's where it's, you know you get these trap games, and you got a team that's energized, and you know go back and looking at that game. And I know we're gonna get into the X's and O's more, but they were energized and they were well prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, the way how they prepared against the one three one and how they well, knew exactly how to locate the shooter and get the shooter open with the cross uh, c- cross court passes and I was really impressed with how well prepared they they came out to win that game and I don't know if they sense like this is a vulnerable moment for UAB that they've been hot they've been traveling on the road. We didn't come out with the requisite energy at all, and they blitzed us. Shout out to their coaching staff um, for really going for it and um, and really inspiring belief in that team. And they were playing over their heads, but they believed. And they all <laughs> rewatched that game because I didn't even watch it. Like at first, like I had to go when I saw how I'm like, whoa, what the hell happened? <laughs> so I right. watched, I did the watch the playback on stadium, and I'm like, wow, we dodged the bullet. So and uh, but yeah, so Jimmy, you know, what's your what's your overall thoughts on this on this road trip? Where you, where you want to start with it? Hey, well, it's always a fantastic feeling to get the road sweep in conference play, so that's huge. And we're dealing yes. with some adverse situations, some. Odd situation starting on Thursday. Uh, when we talk about the UTEP game, we might dive into uh, what Gosh. some of those adverse situations were. Um, but uh, you know what I think Saturday had a lot to do with was UTSA was coming off a big win themselves That's on it. Thursday night. So, you know, once upon a time, I was playing in Tremurals in college, and we were not very good, Darian, and we lost a lot of games in a row. But if you win one, your mindset changed a little bit. So I think that they were feeling themselves a little bit. And then plus you got a good team like UAB coming in there that'll get you excited too. So they were playing a little bit out of their normal character. Kudos to them for pushing us to the limit and challenging us, uh, that being UTSA. But I think that had a little bit to do with it was I think they're on a 10 or 11 game losing streak going into that week. They won on Thursday against Rice, if memory serves me right. And so they're just feeling themselves and we responded. We got challenged, but we got out there or got out of there with a dub. Hey, that's all. And then that's all that matters too. you know, I, I say this over and over again, too. Like, should should UAB on paper have whooped UTSA by 20 or 30 points? Yes. But college basketball, it's hard. It's just hard to win on the road. Like, I don't care, you know, whether you're playing in, you know, uh, Diddle Arena or the Convo Center or a heatless uh, Don Haskins Center. Like, it, it's hard, man, especially in Conference USA. Uh, but hey, UAB got it done, 83 to 78 over the UTSA Roadrunners. UAB has won three in a row now, in seven of its last eight games, and just a few seconds away, our baskets away from 
you know, winning the uh, North Texas game and then too. So that went up double overtime. But yeah, I, Darian, I, I'm with you. I did not get to watch this game live. The the wife and I, Elizabeth and I, had a date night or date afternoon because you know we're <laughs> we like we like to go out in the afternoon and get to bed at a decent hour. Um, so, <laughs> so we were we were out and about in the afternoon. <laughs> And uh, early evening, so I was, you know, kind of keeping tabs on my phone. And the brewery we went to, they uh, they would put it on right before we left. But I was looking at the score, like, you know, at first down to eleven to nothing, and then down by nine in the second half. You're, you're like, what in the world is going on? And then you know, you look at the box score, and it's like UTSA shooting fit over fifty percent from the field. Uh, you know, my mind was instantly to the fact that, you know, hey, UAB's probably got 20-something turnovers, just like UTEP. But no, they ended up with just six turnovers for the game. It's just UTSA was shooting. They were on fire early on. And and I think it speaks to what Jimmy just said earlier, too. Like, when they got that win at Rice, boom. That gave this team belief. And, you know, UAB may have been overlooking UTSA, and I can't blame them if I did. Maybe they read my article on BlazerVictory.com and said that if they just show up, get off the bus, it should be an easy dub. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was not the case. But, hey, they, at the end of the day, they got the job done. Jelly Walker, four personal fouls late in the ball game, hitting clutch dagger threes to pull ahead and preserve the victory for UAB. So, at the end of the day, we can all agree it was a lot closer than we all anticipated it being. But also at the end of the day, they got the dub. Yeah, you know, especially coming off that, you know, good road win versus UTEP just being hot, being a team of um, turning the corner, you know, getting over all of those early season woes and just becoming a cohesive unit. Um, you know, because I guess, you know, that the UTEP game, we kept them at arm's length that whole game mm-hmm. um, for the most part. I believe UTEP that UTEP still out rebound us, but for no, the most, we ended up we ended up out rebounding them. But that first we, half was awful. It was awful. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but we end up matching their physicality because UTEP. I remember you know watching that game. I was like, damn, like they try to turn this into a football game, basically. But um, but we matched we matched their physicality, and we were just the better team, and uh, we kept them at arm's length most most of the game and it was a, a great road win and it's kind of like you know you felt like that this team has really arrived you know like everybody know their roles uh like jelly was turning that corner back from that injury right like yes so you know coming into this utsa game looking when they go up 11-0 we did not have the requisite energy um a lot of times, you know, Trey was kind of ball watching on on those offensive rebounds. We weren't really closing out to shooters. Like our second efforts wasn't there. We we weren't playing physical. We weren't like setting good screens and getting into good sets. We kind of it, the energy just wasn't there. And I get it. I get it because it's like we we done turned this corner, man. We got this game, bro. Like it is so hard to maintain that energy. That energy, game after game after game, especially on the back half of a road trip in South Texas, you know, in San Antonio. It's kind of like, we've been in El Paso. Man, we ready to go home. Yeah. And you're telling a hot team that's feeling really confident, right, and you're going against probably the bottom team in the league, you telling them to come out and play, hey, play hard like we playing against North Texas or like how we played against you. And, and mind you, we already blew UTSA out. So, I mean, it's kind of like, hey, man, y'all y'all know what it is. We used to do this in uh, – <laughs> we'll, you'll, you'll find players doing this during the season against scout teamers. Sometimes you have uh, those overachieving scout teamers right in the middle of the year. Let's say let's let's let's, let's you know look at UAB new schedule. By the time you you know you in there you playing Memphis, you telling the scout team is saying you saying hey bro you not getting on the field. Come out here, stop trying to give all that effort, right, and just give us a look. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not trying to do all of that. I felt like we looked at UTSA was like, hey, man, what what are y'all doing? Y'all trying to win? Like, hey, y'all, y'all come out here and do what you're supposed to do. Play a little bit, da 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 da, and let's let's go home. Like y'all don't have nothing to play for. Let's stop doing this dance. Well, no, UTSA came out. They was well coached. They had press breakers. They they were ready for everything our defense was throwing at them. They were playing physical. You know, they was getting in there, getting all all these offensive rebounds, moving our guys out the way. They were playing smart, and they was getting good shots. I'm like, oh my god, this team really wants to win. And we don't have the energy to match them right now. Uh, kudos to them for finding it. They found it. I, you know, really got worried. I think it was about six minutes or so left, and we went. We was down seven. And that's the time when it's really like, oh snap! Like we really might lose this game. Mm-hmm. But but like as you said, Jilly, I really feel like he's fully recovered from that injury because he was able to put the team on his back and make clutch shots down the stretch. It just looked like the jelly of old. And I'm glad that we stopped. I don't know why early on in that game, it had to be part of the the game plan. I'm like, why are we feeding Trey so much? We kept throwing him the ball in the post. And I love Trey. He's a guy that should get limited touches. Like, we have all of these other offensive weapons. Why do we – and when the team is – he's not Jamie and Davis on the post. Stop. Stop it. Don't overfeed him. Feed him here and there. Do not overfeed Trey. When our team is doing that, that's kind of – I feel like we're lost. But anyway, we were doing that a lot in the first half. And, um, you know, I thought that was just a sign of, hey, man, we really ain't got it. it, it honestly, you could hear – you can hear Coach AK in the first half screaming, wake up, wake mm-hmm. up. You can hear him screaming that. And, uh, yeah, it took us a while to wake fully up, but we found it. And just as I, I appreciate the social media team uh, for the UAB basketball team, they would help it real. And they said, escaped. Yep. <laughs> and I and that, and that was so real. Uh, so, I'm happy that we was able to get out of those that, that deep Texas road swing. We came out with two two good wins, even though people think UTSA blah blah blah. Say what you want to say. If you play this game, you want them to lay down because you expect them to, but they didn't, and it's hard when you kind of expecting the team to kind of roll over, and they they want to sock it to you. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Southern Miss felt like that the year I played. We played them, and they was ranked that year. And we were, like, horrible. This is we talk about UAB football. We were horrible that year, uh, record-wise, anyway. But we had good talent on the team. Southern Miss came in super cocky. If y'all, if you guys could hear the noise, they was talking on that field. And um, I think they was looking at getting the New Year Six Bowl that year. And you could tell they kind of expected to show up and just beat beat us to death. And we got to pushing them around, and they were kind of like, wow, they they didn't have it, and we had it, and that's how it goes sometimes. And that easily could have happened to us in basketball this year. And But Coach knew what time it was. He got those guys to wake up, and um, we played some ball, and we got the, we escaped, just like the UAB um, social media team said, and here we are, man. I think we're in a good position. We we wanted this position going into the – getting ready to go into tournament play. Um, we forecasted that if we could get here, that we would have a shot in the tournament. And we, like you said, we won with seven out of the last eight. It could have been the last eight, you know. And especially with that win over Middle Tennessee, we took it to them. And this is the team – I, I like our team. If we finish things off the way we can, going into conference play, I like the things that we've done. I'm confident that we can – we got a good chance to win conference. Yeah, no doubt. And, I mean, you look at just these last two games. You know, you, you, you look at the UTSA game, yeah. The negative, I guess you could say, is that, you know, UAB got out-rebounded 42-30. to 30, um, But you look at the turnover column and the assist – like – UAB had 11 assists against UTSA to only six turnovers. 
Like UAB handled the ball well. UAB shot it well, 48.4% from the field and 43.8% from three point. Like UAB shot the ball well. It's good to see Jelly kind of getting back to his old self, 25 points in the matchup. Um, and, I mean, it was just good to see. You know, UAB found a way at the end. As Darian said, they woke up towards the end, and they were able to get it done. They were able to get out of that high school gym with a dub, and that's exactly what they did, <laughs> um, beating UTSA 83-78. to 78. Now, <laughs> conversely, talking about what happened Thursday night in El, Pasto, in El Paso in the Don Haskins Center, where, you know, Jimmy mentioned earlier, you know, some weird things happening uh, were happening yeah, it almost felt like they were in the twilight zone because the heat was not working in the Don Haskins Center. There were only two referees for that ball game because the third one got caught in weather delays, so he wasn't even able to get to the arena in time. But UAB still it, it still found a way to win. A double-digit win over UTEP, 79-66. But my goodness, the real negative in that game was the 21 turnovers. I was just, I was getting so frustrated watching this ball game Thursday night. I was like, oh my goodness. Like, can our backcourt just hold on to the ball? But, you know, to give them credit, hey, as I just mentioned, the next game up, UTSA game, only six turnovers. So they got it together, and let's see if they can keep it together going forward. But I think we can put the UTSA game to bed, but this UTEP game, like, whew, UAB to overcome 21 turnovers. I mean, they had to shoht well, and they ended up having to rebound well. So, and they did both of the and, and free throws. They did extremely well in free throws, 16 and 19 from the line, 84.2 percent. Shot the ball well, 52.9 percent, and out, ended up out rebounding UTEP, 37 to 30. So, but those 21 yeah, turnovers. Golly. That definitely had to be the best shooting performance on the road by far this season. Oh, we yeah. needed every bit of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and for those of you that don't know, pretty sure that is UTEP's largest defeat at home at the Don Haskins Center this season. So they lost earlier in the year, nine points against Charlotte, eight against FAU. But a 13-point victory for UAB in that building is the largest defeat for UTEP this whole season. Wow. And I don't know if y'all, if our listeners caught it, but during the show um, the other night, Andy Kennedy said that they will not be playing UTEP in the non-conference going forward. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, the real negative of, um, of the, some of these two games is uh, Red and seen that Ladarius Brewer has a, 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 a <sighs> yeah. fracture in his mm-hmm. wrist, I believe. Um, I so, yeah, we, that, it was becoming an integral part, basically a pseudo starter um, between him and his brother. And now we lose him again in his shooting and his um, secondary playmaking is very important to this team. Um, so I'm glad that we have um, like a Ephraim Johnson in the, in the ranks. We, we have uh, Tony, Tony coming off the bench. And so we got two other guards. We got uh, Taven Loving. Also, so, you know, it's tough, but I feel like he was maybe our second best shooter behind Jelly. Um, but, hey, there's just way to go, and we just, we just got to adjust going forward. Yeah, definitely. Um, Anything to add on either of these two games? Jimmy, do you have anything to add, or can we uh, – do you want to move to preview in the next two games? We can pretty much wrap it up. Just one more note on the Brewer brothers is just, again, just shout out to Ty Brewer. I mean, he's yes. just been a man on fire here as of late. He continues. I think he actually hit his first three against UTEP, if I remember right. So, I mean, he started off hot, and uh, he's just doing great. And what's really fun uh, with Ty Brewer is that he'll just have these mini runs throughout the game. I think it was a UTSA. He had, like, a mid-range jumper. He had a steal and a dunk. And then he goes in the other side of the court, and he blocks a three-point attempt. So he just has like these little mini runs. He had the start. I believe it was our last home game where they were running a lot of sets to him right from the get go uh, where they were getting him the ball in certain action. So he's going on every game. It feels like a six or seven. Oh, Ty Brewer run. So um, hopefully in his brother's absence, he can continue to uh, light it up and play well for us. No doubt. Yeah. Ty has been playing at another level um, these last few games. So we love to see that. Um, but definitely hate it for Ladarius. 
you know, especially with senior night coming up, um, probably not going to see him on the court. Um, but yeah, shout out to Ty again. Keep it rolling. Um, but speaking of senior night, UAB will host the Rice Owls tonight, Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Guys, we hope that everybody can make it out to Bartow Arena just one more time to recognize all these fantastic seniors that have, you know, sweat, blood, poured into this basketball program these last few years. Um, Jordan Walker, Trey Jemison, K.J. Buffin, the Brewer brothers, Taven Lovin, just so, you know, and just so many good players, you know, that UAB basketball fans will remember forever. Um, they have done so much for this basketball program. So if you do not have your tickets, go to UABsports.com or call the ticket office and get you a ticket for Thursday night's matchup. But if you can't get to the court, get to Bartow Arena, you can stream it on ESPN+. Plus. So a few few weeks ago, you know, UAB was able to uh, get it done in Houston, Texas against these same Rice Owls and really took it to them. I mean, just blew out Rice. I think UAB had their best defensive performance of the year against Rice. Rice is a team that kind of lives and dies by the three-pointer, um, and UAB kind of shut them down in that ball game. Just, I mean, really, I think, you know, Darian and I really said that uh, after we recapped the Rice game a few weeks ago, that, that we th- saw that kind of as a turning point. Darian, correct me if I'm wrong, but we saw that as – like, hey, we saw the team, the, the defensive intensity from the whole team really for the first time all year. And it's really kind of just continued since then, you know, since that ball game in Houston. So I'm excited to see what happens Thursday night when Rice comes to town. And I think UAB, you know, you know, should should be able to get it done again. I mean, this Rice is going to be a tall task. Fiedler, their forward down low is, I mean, this team revolves around him so much. He leads, you know, he, he, lead, he leads the Conference USA in a bunch of categories, rebounds per game, assists per game, so many categories. So if UAB can stop him and limit Olivari or Olivari, yeah, Olivari, um, UAB should have a good, have a good time in Bartow Arena for senior night. But again, hope that everybody can make it out to the game Thursday night. Yeah, it'll be nice to see the return of the the requisite energy um, that we kind of lost um, against UTSA and we had to regain. Um, But that energy, as you're right, that energy was discovered against Rice when we were kind of at a turning point of the season. Um, So we know know Rice uh, schematically. They're going to come out prepared. They're going to try to get their shooters open. I think they have a playmaker or two that that, that that they like to get downhill, but they really like to, you know, uh, drive and spray to those shooters. It's all about just closing out. You got to play them, got play those guys with energy. If you know what they're, if you know what they want to do, in which we do, um, if we just play with the right energy and we contest those shooters, make them put the ball on the floor and drive into our bigs. Like, just don't give them those open shots. They kind of play offensively. They kind of play like a North Texas would play, um, but they they don't have half of North Texas' defense. That's the problem, you know. So um, if we just have the right energy like we did the first time, and we should with it being senior night and uh, honoring those great players, um, we should come out. We should handle the business. I'm, not, I'm confident that we will. It's certainly going to be an emotional night. Jelly's last game, Taven played the most career games for UAB. Mm-hmm. Trey Jemison, we've already named all the seniors. Um, I was actually thinking before they announced the Ladarius Brewer injury, who do you start? You've got six seniors, and sometimes, you, I mean, not often do you have that problem. You've got five starting positions. You had six seniors who were going to start, but because of the injury, obviously that's going to be a lot easier um, to determine. But, you know, for me, I'm definitely – Preparing for a track meet, Rice is the only team statistically that plays at a faster tempo than UAB. And y'all have already said it. I mean, they're going to try to get those threes up. So hopefully we can force them into contested threes or force them into shooting from the two-point 
uh, range, which like UAB, they're less efficient shooting from the two. So, um, and John's already mentioned Olivari. Uh, that guy scored 20 plus points in eight out of his last 12 games. He's coming off a 34 point performance, not an efficient outing, but high volume. So he can definitely get up. And he seems like one of those guys that just always, um, I'm even thinking back going to the, I think 2020 to COVID year, like uh, he can really flash. So, you know, I'm expecting them to give us their all. Um, if we hadn't defeated the Owls and, and got rid of that curse here a few weeks ago, I'd be even more nervous. But we finally got the dub versus Rice. So hopefully, to Darian's point, uh, we'll certainly be favored in this game. We'll be able to take care of business and send all the seniors out uh, the right way. Yes, and if they beat Rice, you know, in Bartow, I, I think that does settle the, the the Rice curse because – that would be a couple or the owl curse because yeah, that would be a curse, couple. Yeah. yeah. That would be a couple more in a row that we can just put it to bed. And um, one thing that we got to mention too, is that a win on Thursday night will clinch from what I understand a first round by in the conference tournament. So this game outside of just the fact that senior night has, you know, high implications as it relates to the conference tournament and seating. That's correct. Yeah. Cause the, uh, right now only three games left. So if they win, they would clinch a top five seat to get the first round by. Now, you you know, you still kind of want to get that top three seed just because the the four and the five play in the um in the quarters. So you really want that top top one, two or three seeds. That way you can get a team that just played the night before. Um, but yes, a win uh, over Rice does clinch a first round by um, for UAB. So they're even more, you know, at stake. It's not just senior night like Jimmy just said, but hopefully, hopefully maybe even Darian will be making an appearance tonight at Bartow Arena. Hopefully yeah. Shanique was not listening right now. Hopefully he is. <laughs> let's, let's go. <laughs> hey. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm near. Yeah. The whole Blazer Victory Gang will be able to get hopefully get together uh, for senior night. But hey, guys, like seriously, with Jelly, like. In my three keys to um, a Blazer Victory article that I have on BlazerVictory.com now, like I didn't even want to say a whole lot in the article um, because there's just there's too much to say about every single one of these. Even the Brewer brothers who just came this you know this year, like they've all meant so much to this program. So the least you can do is get to Bartow Arena, guys. Um, you know, to see Senior Night and just give these guys one more night to cheer on in green and gold in a regular season game in Bartow Arena. So definitely get your tickets if you do not already. But big, big chance, big opportunity for UAB. Like Jimmy just said, clinch that uh, first round bye by beating Rice. Now Saturday, UAB will travel up to Bowling Green, Kentucky, to Diddle Arena to take on the struggling Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. But you know what? The more I think about it, the more... I think about it with UAB struggling in the Convo Center against UTSA. Like, that's got to actually bode well for UAB, right? Like, because they're not going to overlook Western Kentucky. And, I mean, hell, Western Kentucky beat them earlier in the season. So there should be extra motivation in this ballgame for Andy Kennedy and company um, to get to Dill Arena, get the victory, and just, you know, kind of put this to bed. I know there will be one more game against Charlotte the next week, and we'll get into that next week. But, you know, you're you're getting on that home run stretch. You're at, what, round and second base after this game, heading to third for uh, Charlotte and trying to get to home to try to get ready for that tournament in Frisco. So if UAB can get these next two games, I'll feel really good about head, about this UAB team heading into Frisco the next week. I'll feel great as well. You know, that will be a tough game at Diddle Arena. That's senior night for WKU. So as much as Thursday night means for us and and those in the Blazers uniform, uh, that's a tough place to play at WKU. And then you add the emotion behind senior night. So we're going to have to earn it. But I like what you said, John. We, I mean, this that WKU game of Bartow, I think that was our first loss of Bartow this season. That was the same game that Jelly, I think, got you know injured initially. Uh, they kind of started that whole run coming off that Florida trip. So there should be plenty of motivation on our side. There's going to be motivation on their side as well. And I will be very impressed if we can you know, take care of business tonight and then also uh, against Western Kentucky. Yeah, I, like, I would like for us to go ahead and just 
Uh, we're going to hit and put a bow on our, all of our beliefs in the momentum, right? So it starts tonight with Rice, but um, it, it'll end with, uh, with, not end, but it'll be validated, let's say, with uh, Western Kentucky going down there and handling business mm-hmm. and you know, kind of avenging that loss that we had. That was a, It was at a... That loss that we had was at a critical juncture of the season, too. It was so disappointing, um, that loss. So it would be good to go down there and serve it back to them and really validate all of the work that we've put in to turn our season around, to establish our identity. Um, and we go down there and really uh, validate all all that all of the work that, we, that we've put in to get to this point and to, to get – to start to put a bow on this season and to go into conference play um, with the clinch by and um, just ready to dish out a whole bunch of revenge. Um, I think we got a lot of pent up vitriol from when we, when we were losing that we need to dish out in conference play. So I'm, I'm already starting to look forward to conference play. Um, I can do that as a fan. I can, you can't do that as a player. Um, I'm just excited about where this team has really bounced back to. And and I think that we're showing showing that on the court. So I continue to see them going on that upward trajectory. And um I'm just happy guys we're here. So Well hopefully uh Saturday at Western Kentucky will be a second senior night for Taven. It's a homecoming for him, Taven Lovin. He always That's seems right. to play well against WKU, so hopefully He'll be able to play in front of his family twice this week, assuming they make the trip down to Birmingham. Uh, but other than that, you know, one other note I had in the game against uh, for WKU is, again, going back to that theme about Ty Brewer. So in the first matchup, Ty Brewer had two points, two rebounds. He didn't start that game, from what I recall. And WKU has a lot of length. You look at their um, the McKnight's 6'1", but then you have Allen's been starting for them at 6'6", Acott 6'8". Hamilton 6'8", and obviously we know Sharp at seven foot five. So I'm really looking to see if that insertion of Ty Brewer into the starting lineup at six foot seven ish, whatever he's listed at, uh, with his length and the way that he's playing, could hopefully be one of the difference makers uh, for us to come out of there with another victory. I love it. And guys, that'll be Saturday night. UAB travels up to Western Kentucky, 7 p.m. Central Time kick uh, tip off sorry and that game will be televised on cbs sports network so definitely looking forward to that looking forward to senior night tonight in bartow hopefully UAB takes care of business against rice and then takes care of business against western kentucky and then we've just got one more regular season game next week at charlotte and then like darian was just saying that's when the real season begins conference tournament at the star, it's time to pull down that big old curtain and yeah. separate uh, <laughs> separate two courts. And hey, <laughs> you know, I can't wait to get out of this dumb conference, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it because hey, tournament bid on the line. FA, you lost to Middle Tennessee this past week, it's going to be a one bid league. So you've got a lot of quality teams at the top, UAB included, with FAU, North Texas. Um, you know, a couple other teams like anything goes in Frisco. So hopefully you even get a couple more dubs, clinch that first round by, hopefully clinch a top three seed and just win three games in Frisco and get to the tournament. Amen. Yes. Well, all right. Well, guys, we'll be back next week to uh, recap what happens against Rice and what happens in Diddle against Western Kentucky. But before we head out, I wanted to plug our Twitter handles. If you are not following us on Twitter, give the Blazer Victory Twitter handle a follow at BlazerPod. You can give Darian a follow at TheyDread75. You can give Jimmy a follow at UAB Athletics Fan. And you can give me a follow at John C. Duncan. So definitely at BlazerPod, at TheyDread75, at UAB Athletics Fan, at John C. Duncan. BlazerVictory.com. Guys, did I miss anything? Or was that, does that cover it all? Oh, let's just put a bow on it. Wraps it up.
Perfect. Well, all right, guys, we'll be ne- back next week. But Blazer Nation, let's ride. Let's ride.